Aid groups Médecins Sans Frontières say one of its teams has been aggressively assaulted by armed men in Sudan's capital. MSF is also known as Doctors Without Borders. It says its 18-member crew was physically beaten and whipped in Khartoum on Thursday. They also report a vehicle was stolen and a driver was detained and threatened. MSF didn't indicate if the attackers were from Sudan's military or the rival paramilitary group Rapid Support Forces. The fighting in Sudan began in April, escalating quickly into a civil war. As CNN's David McKenzie now reports, ethnic violence is raising fears of a new genocide. And a warning, his report contains graphic images. In Al Janaina, the survivors have fled, but the bodies remain. The city came under coordinated attack by the Rapid Support Forces and Arab militia, witnesses tell CNN. This, the awful consequence of Sudan's civil war and decades of ethnic hatred in Darfur. In Mistere, a town of 40,000, Human Rights Watch say attackers swept in at dawn in late May, executing at least 28 men, burning and looting the town, like so many others in Darfur. Now, extensive reports of mass graves are emerging. Fear of accountability, of sure, I think uh, it's not that much for many of the perpetrators in Sudan. And what could that lead to? With the stories we are hearing, I think the concern that we might be heading to a situation in which would amount to be an ethnic cleansing or a genocide. If this oft-repeated phrase of never again is to mean anything, it must mean something here and now for the people of Darfur. But justice then and now hasn't come. The images are eerily similar to Darfur's genocide of 20 years ago. You're all dead, 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 yells a child in Arabic in a convoy of refugees. You sons of bitches, shouts another. Witnesses say snipers target civilians on the road trying to flee. Refugees are often harassed and robbed near the border. Like in this video obtained by CNN. If they make it out alive, they end up in sprawling camps in Chad. More than three million Sudanese have fled their homes, say the United Nations. In Sudan's heart, Khartoum, the vicious fighting goes on. The generals of the Sudan Armed Forces and the RSF holding the country at gunpoint. The big fear was that a civil war in Sudan would not only collapse the state in the, in the center, but it would eventually prove almost difficult to uh, unravel anytime soon because so many other conflicts across the country would, would uh, flare up. The paramilitary RSF, its roots in the Janjaweed Arab militia, seem to be gaining the upper hand in Khartoum and Darfur. And ceasefire talks broken by the US, Saudis and others going nowhere. Whatever happens in Sudan won't stay inside Sudan, but I think the major concern is we could be looking at a Somalia-type situation, where if we don't destabilize the situation soon, it could be decades uh, before the window arises again. Very troubling indeed. The very latest in Mackenzie joins me now from Johannesburg. And David, the concern there, of course, is that we could be seeing the echoes of the atrocities we saw some 20 years ago, history repeating itself. What does the international community do? What's the UN, the ICC, the mediators here? What are they saying? Well, the International Criminal Court prosecutor Issa, uh, you saw some of his, his statements in that piece. He said that the International mechanisms have failed collectively, the pe people of Sudan. Of course, there were already indictments for the atrocities and genocide of 20 years ago, and none of those have resulted in any convictions. And of course, Omar al-Bashir, the former dictator of Sudan, is still uh, not being prosecuted in Sudan at this moment. And you say the echoes of the atrocities, yes, the worry is it could be even worse than what happened 20 years ago. You saw those images of people and being killed and left in the streets. There are multiple reports from the UN Human Rights Watch and just our own reporting of mass graves in multiple parts of Darfur. And that fighting has also spread to other parts of that vast region in the west of the country. Uh, you look at this propaganda video from the Sudanese armed forces of General Burhan, the leader of the uh, military in Sudan, looking confident, talking to his leadership, 
But really, it's a, a false image in many ways because they are struggling to hold on to Khartoum, the RSF paramilitary group, which has a very troubled history of atrocities itself, is uh, making ground, as I said, in Khartoum and in other parts of the country. This really could be a wholesale collapse of Sudan. Analysts worry that it will draw in other countries, both in terms of supporting the belligerents, but also possibly of the fighting spreading into the other neighboring nations. In particular worry is Chad, of course, in the west of the country on that border region. It's a very bad situation. In terms of the uh, negotiations, such as they are, there really is no progress in a meaningful ceasefire. And there has been criticism of various actors in the international community of not working in concert, but almost competing for influence in trying to stop this fighting. Lisa? An important story uh, and analysis there from our David McKenzie. Thanks very much, David.